Do we have any election predictions here? Where do you guys think? Oh, we've got Texas bet. is going blue. I think they both have a bet. Texas uh, got, is going blue. Yeah, listen to me. Hear it out. Hold on. Let me look Corn at the polls. It's yeah. been banned in Texas now. The Republicans, the Republicans have banned Hub out of Texas and my own state of North Carolina, and I don't know how many more. I think this is the true third rail of politics, that when Republicans start with the sperm bank, they're going to start losing votes. I don't think th- I got you know what that's going to do. Taylor's falling Texas right into it. People that. in public will say, nah, it's At okay first to ban will. porn. It might be good for America. But in private, they pull that lever for the Democrats. I've, no, I've got Texas, some, some bad Texas news. birth rate skyrocketing. No abortion, no porn. The, po- the polls right now, Trump Texas is looking babies. Trump Trump is looking good in Texas. I'm just saying. Oh, well, how much got it, banned today? Plus, how plus, nine, in, plus eight. How does it look in a real purple state like Georgia? Georgia, <laughs> all the swing right. states, all the swing states right now are like slightly in favor of Trump. I think so in, the aggr- we, in the aggregate. I, I don't remember the date when we I, I made my Trump bets. Yeah, too early uh, to but, tell now. But it's like a year at least ago, like like before, like long before anything got started. Um, I I just it's a few things. It has nothing to do with what happens in the day in and day out. I just think Biden Biden is too old and he's not beloved. He doesn't have that Clinton magic or that George W. magic. He's not beloved, and you definitely not the Obama magic. Doesn't have that either. He he, he does, he's not sure. running a scam. <laughs> but hmm. Trump, on the other hand, there are people who there there's going to be the anti-Trump vote that goes to Biden. But that's I just don't think hate gets you out if you're on the left. I don't think you can bank on hating Trump or being afraid of Trump to get your guy elected. And that's why I bet on Trump. Because he, he probably Trump's, should not be antagonizing Nikki Haley voters, though. I don't, I don't think that's very smart. Nobody should be antagonizing um, Trump because he's about to be the president of the United States. I think that all of these lawsuits, I'd be backing off. I'd be leaving him the fuck alone until I knew for sure that he wasn't about to be the commander in chief. I'd want a postponement on everything. I'd want to wait until we know who we're prosecuting slash persecuting. In some cases, some of that shit is yeah. very valid. I think but the some charges help him in the primaries, but I don't know if it'll help him in the general and it's not even clear at this point if any of these well the manhattan trial is probably going to start next month um but no. it's not are you not up to date on that the manhattan trial got delayed uh mm-hmm. today uh mm-hmm. bragg said he'd be willing to wait 30 days what did you hear maybe something similar but i think in, they're going to reschedule it in 30 i'm not sure it'll start in 30 days and i think i might have heard 90 I think I did. I did hear ninety days, but who knows? I'm only as good. Oh, as Oh, I saw. I saw thirty, and then and then it would be um jury. It's only like two hundred and forty days before the election, something close to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So dock ninety off that. Now we're one hundred and fifty days from the election, and they don't like to do these trials in the last two or three months. It, it's just easy to see how it gets pushed on the other side of November. It's, it's tactically so. I don't get why they did it at this time if they were trying to like really hurt Trump because it. It galvanizes support around him much more than it like gets more people against him. Well, like it galvan- it's a bad it just politically, for- it's a bad tactic to do this leading up to an election. Well, galvanize support for his supporters. A galvanize support during the primaries. I don't know how many. I mean, you could be right, but I don't know how many independents are looking at at like legal peril as though it m- makes him like a martyr. But you're also you're also framing this like it is necessarily a political thing. Um, like there was this tactical thing, like democratic leadership got together and it was like, okay, let's coordinate these indictments. I think it's, you have, well, that's, that's what it seems to be. Like, do you yeah. think he, he would be uh, concerned for this stuff if he announced I'm not running? Even if it's president? not, you'll have a hard time convincing uh, most people. That's that true. The timing is not suspect and, and appearances is all that matters. That's true. I think you're right about that. I think, I think most people view that, view it through a partisan lens, but I don't think mm-hmm. like Nancy Pelosi and Schumer, and Biden gotten, you know, invited like Jack Smith and Fonnie Willis and Bragg to the White House and like secretly coordinated this. It was just, I think they had been investigating in Georgia since like immediately after the January or not necessarily the January 6th stuff, but the like the the call to Raffensburger and all that. So she started investigating like right away. And um, you know, you you like you have to start it at some point and and if yeah. you wait too long and then he's president and then the statute of limitations runs out. So the timing makes Ooh. sense 
even if you, uh, the timing makes sense if you remove the partisan sort of like interpretation of things. Um, but uh, I think like a lot of people, they have like a, a, a sense of power and like power hier hierarchies in this country as there being like a cabal of people at the top that are like pulling the strings. I think like a lot of people view power through that lens. And I think the real world is just much more complicated and disconnected and, and uh, interconnected. And it's yeah. fun. I think people see the other side like that. And I, and I guess I'm kind of projecting here because that's how I see Trump. Trump just took over the RNC. This is the Republican National Committee, like the, not the government, but the party that's responsible for getting people elected. And Trump put his daughter-in-law in there. She's in like the second in command and the She's first in command. She's the co It's like a yeah. figurehead that's also a Trump sycophant. And they're just doing Trump shit. They got completely, they completely got rid of their mail-in voting people. Uh, any kind of mail-in voting drive or early voting drive, they got rid of that, saying that early voting and mail-in voting is bad. I think it's a huge tactical error, but it's a thing Trump is doing. All this RNC money is going to go to Trump. It's not going to go down ballot. No more senators, no more uh, House of Representatives or local school boards or whatever. Trump has taken all that money and he's going to pay his attorneys and he's going to pay himself. And I think it's going to wreck yeah. the party. I, you guys are confident Trump is going to win. I think Trump is going to get absolutely butt fucked come come november I and not just trump that. i think it's gonna hurt other people down the line too and i, I know it, it's not easy to be this confident i get it but he got butt fucked in, in 2022 in 2020 and in 2016 like these guys haven't had a good run in a long time it's been um it's been a minute but like the other thing to point that point out too is that po polling underestimated trump and and the Republicans broadly in 2016 and 2020, when we're talking about state level polls, the national polls were actually kind of close to the margin of error in the aggregate for like RCP and 538. It was state level polls where it was like, you know, you had the poll saying like Ohio Clinton plus two. And then the final product is like tech Trump plus one. Like what the fuck happened to the polls there? Um, but one thing that has been going on now consistently since the Dobbs decision is Democrats have been overperforming in contest mm -hmm. and after contest after contest. We've seen like gubernatorial seats that have been flipped, state legislatures, state Supreme Courts. Um, there's no question that the Dobbs decision energized voters. And what's happening right now is, is the uh, Democrats are doing better with specifically energized voters, with the type of voters that will show up and vote in a special election or a midterm election. They have an advantage there. The, the mm. thing that's unpredictable is that Trump actually brings a lot of people to the polls. He's energizing. So it's going to be this energizing force of Dobbs and because it's not Biden. You guys are right about that. Like he's not like a cares. He's not like a beloved character mm -hmm. or, or a president. So it's, it's going to be the Dobbs decision and like recent stuff like IVF, you know, stuff like that. Um, that does energize a lot of a lot of voters. And I, so I want to get your Trump. I, I can your think of on can, like Gavin Newsom. I think he is like a good option if the Democrats like I feel like he makes the most sense in my he view for them to the like worst. switch someone out. He but he's the most. The he's the most uh, who's better than him? Like uh, even here's the everyone thing, like, if he pulls so, the worst. So here, here's the thing: like people say, Oprah. like, well. The, the generic Democrat polls better than Biden. So, you okay, know, they need to bring do. somebody else in. But then when you get specific polling, like, okay, well, how does Pete poll against Trump? How does Kamala poll against Trump? How does Newsom poll? How does Whitmer? Biden polls the best against Trump against uh, 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 versus all these. And it makes sense. Like uh, incumbents yeah. have an advantage. Sure. They have name recognition and all that. But Gavin Newsom, I think, is a sharp politician. If you watch his like interviews with... Um, even if you don't like his politics, if you, if you watch his interviews, like with Hannity, he's really good at holding things in his head. So Hannity will mm -hmm. say like five things and then he'll tackle each thing like in order. He's really good at keeping. So rhetorically, yeah. he's very skilled. I don't know if he has a lot of appeal outside of California. I do, I do I not like Gavin Newsom DeSantis at all, but he's clearly, debate. he, he seems like he would, he's the most like traditionally good looking. He's not overweight. He's not fat. Normal looking dude. Like optics is paramount when you're in politics. And when it gets slimmed down to R versus D, like I just don't like I don't imagine Biden doing a good job. Gavin Newsom. I don't know. Maybe I'm totally wrong. I think, I think Whit, Biden. I, think I don't think Biden's my if you ask me to pick my uh, my my second pick for who's going to be president, like most likely Trump, who's second most likely. It's still not Biden. Who Interesting. is Who wins? I, 
Well, it's people have been saying like Rogan I think says the it a lot. Most likely thing is that Biden dies, and Ro- Rogan Rogan's been he's been saying this a lot. Where it's like, well, he can't. They can't run Biden. They can't run. The, the, here's the reality: it, it was always going to be Trump versus Biden after 2020, but it's not going to not be Biden. It's going to be Biden. 100 percent is going to be Biden. People just assume that he was going to be this one-term president. If mm-hmm. you look at interviews really early on, he was saying, "My intention is to run again," but I'm not going to. I'll tell you when the time comes. But he was mm-hmm. saying the whole time his intention is to run two terms. His age is obviously a liability. Like, and and voters seem to have hardened in that position. Yeah, and that's that's a really tricky thing to disentangle, like uh, decouple yourself from. Like, mm-hmm. um, so that's going to be the big challenge for him. And un- you know, unfortunately, the only way to do that is to be aggressive and get him get him out there more. Get people like show the public. Like, yes, he stammers. Yes, he stutters. But if you put him in a long form interview, he can get into like deep detail about like complicated geopolitical stuff. And uh, he, mm-hmm. again, he might stammer, but he's not dumb uh, and he's not demented. But I think yeah. he definitely is not entirely with it. What makes you say that out of curiosity? Seeing the way that he kind of hoovers around the stage, needs constant assistance and people walking up to guide him makes gaffes not understanding who he's discuss- who he's discussing where he's discussing about he's just not with it like if if it were anyone else but trump i feel like they would replace this guy and go with someone who's way more capable and that they were comfortable putting in front of the country more because like how many times have we how many times have you seen him like about to answer a question and his like wife scurries over real quick and ushers him off I don't know. Or, I've never seen that. But I haven't seen. I mean, I see. What you, I see. What, I understand what you're saying. Optically, there's no question that he he has never been a skilled orator. But ten years ago, he was way better in, on a microphone than he is now. There's no question that he's yeah, like he's lost old man. He's like How, eighty-two. What do you guys think of the idea that um every basically every president moving forward for like the next like twenty to thirty years are going to have an initial bump when they first get inaugurated because that's what always happens. But then it's going to just hover around forty percent. No, no, I disagree. Who, um, okay. Give me one person that could get uh, 55. It's not and about the 55. It's not about the person. It's about the scenario that we're in. If we like, like if if things Ooh, are just coasting along, yeah. eco- economy up, economy down, then yeah, you're right. But if we get in a a, a real war, if excluding somebody, we don't like talk some shit, and we got to go handle it, and everybody gets them flags out, and all of a sudden there's country music at every Super Bowl, and they're not we're not doing the Black National Anthem anymore because. We've got Toby Keith's fucking hologram out there singing the, the sequel. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like well, Trump and, had that. He had that with COVID. That could have been like, yeah. if he would have worked that, I mean, he, I feel like COVID in some he ways was, that. was a gift. He could have, he could have, he could have, in another universe, he could have sailed. To, I would have like only, here's what I did. I should be on mm-hmm. his fucking team. I, I, I said, Mr. President, mm-hmm. here's the thing. Each and every vial of the vaccine if you're going to fund this, what do they call it? Woody, like the surge or something, when they put a bunch of money in to try to develop the cure. Operation I don't think that warp per- speed. Operation warp, warp speed is that what you're looking at? I'm pretty sure you told me that that warp speed wasn't directly um, responsible for the the, the COVID vaccine. It being was created. responsible for like one or two out of the three. Maybe Hutch knows. Okay. Well, uh-huh. I don't. He should have had his face on those bottles, or at least the American flag. If he had done that, if, if if the whole world, when they got their life-saving bottle of medicine, they had to draw it out of an American flag painted bottle, I'd like that. And anybody who won't, let them die. Didn't he put his name on the on on one one of the rounds of the stimmy checks? Yes, Didn't he, he did. Yeah, yes, he, he did. At the bottom. Yeah, I liked that. I, I liked Biden that a lot. Similar. I think Biden did I something did similar too. recently. Biden did that for the. I bet uh, he didn't want to at first. Yeah. I bet he didn't want to at first, but some staff was like, sir. You, here are the numbers uh, and they, they showed because every time i see black folks talking about trump on like social media they're like i remember that check he sent me that's what i remember <laughs> <laughs> i remember yeah. that motherfucker bought my playstation 5 <laughs> yeah, that's what i remember been, madden motherfucker <laughs> republicans have been making it? um like progress with uh hispanic voters and black voters i mean i, I don't know if like it's pro- could be Dude, like, they're was, such Charlie Browns with that. It's hilarious. They're like, this is the time that more than <laughs> zero black people vote Republican. <laughs> and then they're wrong every well, he time. Already, no, he already did a little bit better with black voters in 2020. And the I current polling. Small, though, didn't right? he win Mexico? It's like going from like 8 to 10%. But, you know, yeah. that's. It that, matters, that, though. Yeah, you, that really you does. You need all of yeah. every one of them. It's it's so close. Oh, but here's he, why he, 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 sorry, he gets God. a ton of Mexican support. And here's why. 
um, Spanish American, whatever you want to fucking call it, immigrants, true immigrants who know we're now fucking voters who came from there. Because those people have one thing in common. They all went through the process. That's how that's why they're able to vote. And they hate and communists. It, and if they can vote, it's an extensive process. If they've gone that far mm. down the road, they're not just on some work visa or some long term program. They're like, voting Mex former Mexicans. They went through the steps. So when they see somebody jump into the front of the line behind them, they don't like that. So immigration's a big deal to them. Here's the other one. All of them are Catholic. All of them are Catholic. And yeah. and and they don't like abortion. Yeah. They like having 18 fucking kids. And gay all marriage. Right? And gay they, marriage. They, they, they hate that shit. Yeah. They but got I, all sorts of mean words for that. Mm -hmm. it, I think it's like, I saw, a poll, I saw a poll where it was like, I think it was like 75 or 80% of Spanish Catholics living in the United States, or Hispanic Catholics that live in the United States oppose gay marriage. Like they were the um, the most opposed of any of the- I don't think uh, gay marriage approval is going to go in that direction though. I think it's going to get more and more accepted every decade as time goes by. Yeah, and it's like interracial marriage. Right. But the Democrats have some other stuff wrong. And the one I'm thinking of really is that- it, some of their passion around trans issues, particularly biological males and female sports, like, bro, this is a bad position. Would you just drop it? Stop yeah. that. It, like, what did I, you call me? <laughs> I saw call me? the, well, this is like five years ago, but the guy that won the Texas state, no, the girl that won the Texas state wrestling champion was clearly a guy. She was jacked. She'd kick my ass too. And I'm like, this is just wrong. This is wrong. That Penn State guy, the swimmer, girl, fuck, I keep fucking this up. Um, she was a guy the year before. She was a division one male swimmer. And then he she just flipped world. over to the girl side and you know, put on a different bathing suit and fucked everybody up and won the national championships. Because of course she did. When Democrats support this kind of stuff, it's a, not an important issue, but Politically, it is, and no one's on their side. So change it up. Yeah, Trans people guns. represent 0.5% of the population in adults, Half and they the take up about 50% of the discourse online. Um, yep. So I think they're allowed. I agree. They're a very loud and obnoxious group of people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you were the one to step out of line and. And really, that last hutch comes through. <laughs> so, but yeah, the, some positions are just losers. But Roe v. Wade is probably an even bigger issue, and it's a loser too. And this thing, I, I think disagree. I disagree. That's where I was going with the Catholics, Mexicans. Porn they, they, they illegal like the Roe in my state. Roe v. Wade thing. Pornhub's illegal in Texas. Keep doing this, Republicans. See how many votes you get. Ah, that's okay. That's different. They'll never figure out who to blame for that. See, little issues like that don't 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 resonate with the little voter. You're it, wrong. It, I'll tell you why. Because when you go to Pornhub, it's a video. It, there's only one page you can possibly oh, get to. Okay. And it's a woman saying, yeah, well, the Republicans don't want us to, like, verify your ID and get some credit cards or something like your know, federal yeah. ID so that we know exactly what porn you're watching. And we're just saying not for your state. Damn. Okay. That's a different story then. The, um, there's, it, there's a if Pornhub was smart, they would. Oh, never mind. No, you're right. Yeah.